Home loan arrears are surging. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from the urban developer. Home loan arrears rising as mortgage deferrals come to an end. Now yesterday we looked at an article where, well, Almost a third of Australians are 30 days behind on their mortgage payments. And this was from a finder survey. Now, some people question the fact that the survey size was only 446 because 30% seemed quite drastic, quite significant. Now, some of these samples that people take are pretty small for a lot of surveys. But I can understand why people don't trust Finder as the most reputable source. But... You've also got to understand, if, if you're saying, I don't know anyone that's suffering from mortgage stress, it's not something you're going to admit to. It is not something you're going to admit to at all. And we actually looked at that in a survey. I mean, if you're, if you're in financial trouble, I mean, let us know in the comments while I search for this. Did you tell anyone? Did you tell anyone? Once, once you were doing it tough, I had a mate, I told, you know, I told him, months ago how how tough we did it and he was shocked he said why didn't you call me why didn't you ask for help and i go well you don't do that you find a way you suffer through it you do it well so i'm just scrolling through here and um there's a rent hike are you financially better um where is it where is it we got a, we got a server here and these these still remain live these asking how many times you go into the bank branch that was a good one here we go so three weeks ago two and a half thousand people voted on this little survey here are you or someone you know in mortgage stress? Yes, we are in mortgage stress. 9% of respondents, everyone. Yes, we know people who are in mortgage stress. 12%. So that would be, what, 21%? Maybe there's a bit of double up. So 33% said no, we're ahead or debt free. 32% said no, we don't have a mortgage. And 14%, well, they can't even get a deposit together. So we... Mortgage stress is, uh, my understanding, is about 35% of your gross gross income pre, you know, before they take all the tax out is going towards your mortgage. And you've got to understand, you know, our cash rates are so low at the moment that if we get a correction, and even if it's in a couple of years' time, if people borrowed just as much as they could to get into that place because they had to, and then interest rates go up from 1.99 maybe to 4%, that may be a big hit for some people. And then they might enter mortgage stress. So let's have a look at this, uh, people that are in arrears. Because there's some different numbers here, but it's shocking the amount of growth that's occurred. So, analysts are warning Australian mortgage arrears are starting to rise as mortgage relief measures taper off at the end of the month. I mean, there have to be some people that are just kicking the can down the road. That are, all, that are just putting their heads in the sand thinking it's all going to get good. Maybe they're believing all the hype in the media. Maybe that's all they can do. You know, you need to really, if you're in this situation, you need to, you need to cut back, like cut back everything. We went, we went months without a new a hot water system. <laughs> we had to boil the water on the stove to put it in the bath for the kids because we couldn't, we didn't have the cash to repair it which was kind of you know, a little embarrassing, but you just make do. You do, when times are tough, you do what you need to do. And that, that's when Ray, Rachel was actually pregnant at the time. I've got a really good wife. She puts up with a lot. But it was summer, so it wasn't too bad. And cold showers are good for you. Got, one of the viewers has sent me some stuff on LinkedIn. He's, he's all in the you know, cold showers and the, the um, shocking your body with the temperatures. Let, let us know if you do that, if you have like a morning ice ice bath or cold shower so anyway back on topic in the standards and poor performance index australian prime mortgages increased to 1.37 percent in december last year compared to 1.28 percent 12 months earlier so you're going about we you know one 1.3 percent you'd consider that an average and wait wait till we look at some of the suburbs in this article s p standards and poor Analytical manager Kate Thompson said low interest rates and a strong economic recovery had tempered rising arrears. Now, is the economy really, can we really say the economy is recovering or significant government intervention? 
I guess to some people that's enough. We expect COVID-19 related arrears to more meaningfully surface beginning in the second quarter of 2021, following the expiration of mortgage deferral periods in March 2021, Thompson said. So this is it. The, the second quarter of this year, we're going to start to see the arrears climb. But, but wait, wait till you see some of these ones. Strong property market performance will also help existing borrowers by enhancing their equity position in their homes, improving their refinancing prospects. So, there you go. How many of you have refinanced your mortgage? We did it a, a few years ago when I consolidated all of our debt uh, because we'd, we'd gotten all this capital gain on our property. So, I, I um, just consolidated all of our debt onto the one mortgage i think that's something something uh what's his name dave ramsey hates but you know if it clears off your uh all your credit cards and then you destroy them which is what we essentially did and what else uh we had another mortgage we, we bought a portion of my parents property so they could get out of debt and uh so i had some money sitting on that property i just consolidated it all and then when my mother saw we could get the, you know we got the cash that we bought in that property I don't think we made any money uh, because he, you know, we bought it two humps in the cycle, but still, that's the way you, you do it. So for us, that was good because to, to get to that point though, I needed some breathing room. You know, it, it was a, a point where I actually had time to sit down and get control of everything and to understand what was going on. Because, you know, when you're just so busy going ahead, boom, 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 sometimes you need that step away. I'm hoping that will happen to a lot of people that, uh, you know, maybe all these lockdowns and things maybe it's the first time they've had a chance to step away maybe it's the first time they've actually had the time to sit and look at things and get it under control i'm hoping maybe i'm naive guys maybe but you can hope eh the data showed arrears increases have been more pronounced in inner city areas where population shifts have impacted on rental incomes along with the lack of international tourism and migration there you have it everyone so here are some of the suburbs in Victoria. Altona East, loans in arrears, 6.14%, everyone. West Australia and Forestfield, 5.58% in arrears. And remember, I've been bringing up this chart for some time. This is an old chart uh, from the RBA, Guy de Bell. Look at the WA arrears in this chart. You know, 1.5%, probably 1.6. And here, in some WA areas, we're looking at we're looking at 5.58%, everyone, of the loans. In WA, Byford, 4.9. New South Wales, Cath uh, Catherine Field, 4.79. WA, Bindle, 4.7. Darwin, Darwin, everyone, 4.67. And they're talking it all up in the in the property spruiking. Oh, look how good Darwin is. NT is shooting to the moon. Nearly 5% of mortgages in Darwin are in arrears. New South Wales in Gulford, 4.55. WA, Cloverdale, 4.49. New South Wales, Bankstown, 4.46. And WA, Maddington, 4.46. And this is from December everyone victoria's altona east has the dubious honor of being crowned the worst suburb for loan arrears followed by forest field and byford in western australia thompson said it was important that prudent lending standards were maintained to offset the risks associated with increasing household debt to income ratios pressures when house price growth outstrips wage growth well wage growth does this wage growth even exist anymore Are we even talking about it i mean <laughs> i can't see it happening data from s p's rmbs performance watch australian market overview victoria had the highest number of covid 19 hardship mortgage deferrals in australia accounting for one third of all deferrals new south wales followed closely with 32 percent and Queensland comes in third with 27% of the country's mortgage deferrals. Now, here's the thing with the, the banking 
regulators' rules, they won't count these COVID-19 deferrals as in arrears. They just don't have to report them as that. They've changed the rules. Western Australia has an 8% share of mortgage deferrals. South Australia, 4%. With a balance of states and territories accounting for 1% each. Inner city properties in Melbourne and Sydney have suffered some of the worst declines in rental income in the past 12 months as renters abandon the cities. Well, people want to get out of the cities. I was talking to, to a mortgage broker mate yesterday, and he was telling me some of his clients who have portfolios in investment properties and apartments are just getting out. They've sold their whole portfolios. He knows a few of them that are doing that. They're going to need to get it done before the end of financial years so I can offset some of the capital gains with some of the capital losses. I'm getting out. What does that tell you, everyone? Where's the confidence in that sector there? According to S&P data, these areas formerly had some of the lowest arrears in the residential mortgage-backed securities market. But analysts warn it may be more difficult for investors with inner-city locations to refinance their properties. Thompson said investors may sell off properties to offload debt. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more. I mean... The property price for let's go to you know let's go to SQM some of the asking prices guys the asking prices for property you know it's going look here we go all units nine you know nine hundred ninety nine so there we go we're back at twenty eighteen level and if you go even further back there you know twenty sixteen let's have a look at Melbourne how's Melbourne going same type of thing guys two bit all houses have spiked. Look at units flat, slightly tapering down. You know, and this is only from oh, this is from Feb. So we'll have to see. What do you reckon? So there we have it. <clears throat> Arrears. Well, I, I I get an update, guys. Not the thirty percent that Finder are finding in their survey, but still. When 1.5% was considered high and we're getting areas over 5%, over 6%, it's something to be concerned. What do you think? As always, thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.